<laughs> the Godfather Part 2 is Francis Ford Coppola's follow-up to his masterpiece of The Godfather, considered by many to be just as good if not even better than its predecessor. In this film, Don Michael Corleone seeks to find out who attempted to assassinate him at his Lake Tahoe house and enact revenge against the perpetrators, with there being two prime suspects, Hyman Roth and Frank Pentangeli. Roth is a Jewish businessman with whom Michael is currently in the middle of a potentially lucrative deal with involving Cuban casinos. However, it is later revealed through the idiocy of Michael's brother Fredo that Roth was indeed behind the hit, with Roth eventually revealing his primary motive, that being the murder of Mo Green in the first film, which was sanctioned by Michael. Roth is backing the Rosato brothers in a street war against Frank Pentangeli, who runs what used to be the old Corleone crime family after taking over from Peter Clemenza. Michael's reluctance to help Pentangeli and him telling Pentangeli to make peace with the Rosato brothers is something that made Frank a suspect in the assassination attempt, however temporary. Frank Pentangeli is aghast that he isn't allowed to do anything about the Rosato brothers, who he considers to be dirty players, and he warns Michael against trusting the cunning Hyman Roth, but his concerns are dismissed. It's quite sad then, when you consider the fact that Frank was right in his assessment of Roth, who, as it turns out, wanted Michael dead and out of the way, and also about the Rosato brothers who, in league with Roth, try to murder Pentangeli at the same meeting where the two parties are supposed to make up and put aside their differences. Pentangeli enters the bar, leaving his muscle Willy Chichi outside, but seconds later, Tony Rosato, played by Danny Aylo, strangles Frank, dragging him across the bar and out of sight. It is only the chance arrival of a passing policeman which saves Pentangeli's life, who catches wind something is afoot, guns are drawn, bullets fire every which way but loose, and a frantic street battle occurs. The result? Frank Pentangeli, confused and scared, goes to the FBI and flips, and decides to testify against his old crime boss, Michael Corleone, as he believes he has been betrayed by Michael. But the reason Frank thinks Michael betrayed him is due to a line said by Tony Rosato which has confused Godfather fans for years, and it's when Pentangeli is being strangled and Tony Rosato says, Michael Corleone says hello, implying of course that the Rosato brothers are in cahoots with Michael to get rid of Frank. And the only real tangible reason Frank has for turning against Michael and becoming an informant was that he thought Michael wanted him killed, because of this line. But the reason why it's confused fans is because, well, why on earth would Tony Rosato feel the need to say Michael Corleone says hello to a man who A, is supposedly seconds away from death, and B, Michael Corleone wasn't even involved with this? Why randomly give him credit while you're killing your biggest rival? What makes this line even more confusing is that the actor who said it, Danny Aylo, said he ablibbed the line in rehearsal and director Francis Ford Coppola liked it and kept it in the film. So then we get another head-scratching question. If the line itself was improvised, before they rehearsed the scene, what was even the filmmaker's idea as to why Pentangeli flipped? Because surely the whole Michael Corleone says hello is the entire reason, but apparently that wasn't even part of the original plans for the film. Does it mean then that Pentangeli was going to escape the assassination attempt and in his fury at Michael for almost getting him killed, he flips? I guess that kind of makes sense, though it is a little weak. You would think that Pentangeli would surely need a bit more juice to turn against Michael, seeing as though he was a long-time member of the Corleone family, and the Michael Corleone says hello line provides just that. It's just a bit weird that it apparently wasn't in the original script and the actor came up with it himself, although many great aspects of the Godfather movies were things that were not originally planned. So going back to the line itself, we can see why it's there. It serves a narrative purpose, i.e. to get Pentangeli to flip. But it's still such a random thing for the Rosato brother to say. Why does he say it? He's trying to kill Pentangeli. So why randomly say that line? As insurance, just in case somehow Frank magically survives? No way, that's terrible reasoning. Imagine Luca Brasi shaking and gurgling, sinking down to his death as he's struggling in the first movie, and Virgil Solotto blurts out, Don Corleone sends his regards. 
just in case Luca goes beast mode and takes out everyone in the room. It's stupid, it's too much of a stretch. So why did he say it? Well, I mean, one simple explanation is that they needed a reason for Pentangeli to turn on Michael, and this was the easiest avenue. And without the line, there's a bit of a plot hole as to why Frank even turned on Michael in the first place. If that's the case, it comes off as a rare clunky and lazy moment in an otherwise excellent film. And perhaps Frank's betrayal wasn't as seamless and smooth because they were making last minute changes from when Pentangeli's character was originally supposed to be Clemenza, as I've detailed in previous videos. But if we're talking in-universe reasons, there's a few I can think of. It could be simply a taunt from the Rosato brothers, one last kick in the teeth, adding insult to injury by making Frank think his family betrayed him, and these are the last thoughts he has in his final moments. Or maybe, for whatever reason, Tony Rosato actually does think this hit has been sanctioned by Michael Corleone. Maybe when he was given the okay from Hyman Roth, Roth said that Michael was fine with it, that Michael in fact ordered it, Roth is a careful and cunning man, so you wouldn't put it past him to do just this, so that there's no chance the Rosatos actually go to Michael and tell him Roth is pulling some weird shenanigans behind your back. If the Rosatos thought they were kidding on the orders of Michael, and he had promised Pentangeli's territory to them, then maybe the line, Michael Corleone says hello, is a message to other people in the room, and of course the news will spread, i.e., this is what happens when you mess with Michael Corleone, although of course the hit was actually ordered by Hyman Roth. It is still a bit weird though, isn't it? Roth wants Pentangeli dead, so the Rosatos, who are under his thumb, gain territory and control, and by killing Pentangeli and making it seem like Michael ordered it, he might also start a Corleone civil war, with the capos turning against Michael. But the way Tony Rosato lets Pentangeli think the order came from Michael is by telling Pentangeli who, in a few minutes, will be dead. What's he gonna do, stick his head outside the bar and say again, Michael Corleone says hello, loud enough so that Chi Chi can hear him as well? Unless, of course, Frank Pentangeli was never supposed to die, and the entire hit was an elaborate mock execution where Frank was supposed to think Michael tried to have him killed. For this theory to work, the cop that randomly walks past and comes inside the bar would have had to be in on it and on the payroll. It is a bit of a coincidence that a cop appears just as a principal character is getting bumped off, but I suppose it can happen. But does it make sense for a cop to have been in on it? Well, he doesn't really put up much of a chase, and though we hear shooting outside, we never see this cop exchange shots. It's really a firefight between Willy Chichi and the Rosato brothers. I guess this is the most plausible theory, and it's the only real one where the Michael Corleone says hello line makes real sense. Roth played this one beautifully, as Tom Hagen later says. But the scheme seems awfully elaborate, and re-watching the scene, there aren't any real clues that it's a setup. It seems to be Oscar-worthy acting all round, and the ruse is even maintained when Frank is out of sight and earshot, busy getting strangled. Seems a little far-fetched, to be honest, and Roth couldn't guarantee that Pentangeli would go to the feds. It is more plausible that the hit got botched and Roth used Pentangeli testifying to his advantage as a contingency plan, as a backup, pulling the strings of the Senate committee hearings as we see in the film. It's also worth noting that Fredo Corleone receives a phone call from Joni Ola, Roth's right-hand man, asking if Pentangeli really was going to make a deal with the Rosato brothers and if he was bringing his boys. Fredo doesn't know and hangs up the phone, but maybe via a trickle of information, word got back to the Rosato brothers and they said Michael Corleone says hello, not to imply Michael sanctioned the hit, but that the Rosato brothers were tipped off by the Corleones, i.e. Fredo even though of course Fredo didn't really provide any information. Maybe, all things considered, Michael really did try and have Frankie killed for the insulting way he talked to him at the Lake Tahoe complex, although this is something never really insinuated in the film so isn't really worth talking about. So what do you make of this line and why do you think it was said? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.